Hi and welcome back to another video of Medic Notes. This video will be on quick revision of a short case, especially in pediatrics neurology. So the common cases in neurology pediatrics would be cerebral palsy and hydrocephalus. So this video will be talking about hydrocephalus. So in short case, on general inspection, we look at the patient, the child, and we comment on the, their mental status, whether they are alert and conscious. Look at the head circumference and we expect to see macrocephaly. They might have sun setting eyes and also squinting of the eyes. We look for Ryle's tube, also known as nasogastric tube, to help in their feeding. And also bedside apparatus such as wheelchair, are they wearing pampers or is there any food orthosis at the bedside. So then we do close inspection of their head and this is a picture showing a child who had a VP shunt done. So when we closely inspect the head, we measure the head circumference, expect to see some dilated scalp veins, surgical scars, and this VP shunt is the ventricular peritoneal shunt, so seen in this picture over here. And we need to trace the shunt. And another shunt that we might be able to see is Omaya shunt. So other examination, we have to do neurological examination, same as the cerebral palsy steps. And after completing the examination, we can comment that we would like to complete the examination by checking the vital signs of the patient, checking the spine for spina bifida, the examination to assess the anatone, urinary incontinence, check for this, and also fundoscopy to look for any retinal hemorrhage or evidence of chorio retinitis. So after finishing our short case presentation, the examiner might ask some questions in the discussion part, which include what is the cause of hydrocephalus? So these are the answers. We can say that there are two types of hydrocephalus, which is the communicating and non-communicating type. So for the communicating type, which means there is no obstruction. The cause of the communicating hydrocephalus is due to either due to impaired absorption or increased production of the cerebrospinal fluid. And the reduced absorption can be due to causes such as meningitis, subarachnoid or intraventricular hemorrhage. Cause of increased production of cerebral spinal fluid may be there is a choroid plexus papilloma. Whereas for the non communicating hydrocephalus, it is due to obstruction of the cerebral spinal fluid flow and it can be congenital or acquired, where congenital will be due to anal Kyrie malformation or Dandy Walker malformation in the brain, and acquired may be due to brain tumor. So the examiner may also ask what inve investigations would you like to do to confirm your diagnosis. So these are the investigations that we can do, including cranial ultrasound and cranial MRI. So cranial ultrasound is done for infants less than 6 months old through the anterior fontanelle, whereas cranial MRI can help us to differentiate whether it is a communicating or non-communicating type of hydrocephalus. The main treatment would be to do a uh, cerebral shunt placement to drain the excessive cerebral spinal fluid. So this procedure is called as the ventricular peritoneal shunt, which I show in the picture just now. So that's all for this video. Thank you.